Okay, now we haven't officially defined a kernel yet, but when we do, we're going to want it to have some certain properties. And in order to figure out what those properties are, we're going to start in a very simplified setting, um, which is where the whole feature space is finite. Not finite dimensional, but actually finite. Okay, so given that we're going to define k to be an inner product in some space, what properties should it have? Well, let's start simple with our finite sized world. And in particular, the feature space is of size m, which means that there are exactly m locations that you can sit at in the feature space. And you might say, this is totally unrealistic. Like even when I'm in a two dimensional space, there's an infinite number of possible values for features uh, that features can take on. So this is totally unrealistic. But I want to prove to you that it's not. It's actually, it's actually pretty realistic. Um, so I will give you a, a realistic example in which um, the, the data really do live in a finite space. And I recently realized that um, most of the data sets I work with actually are living in a finite space. Okay, so the finite space uh, has, uh, the only possible fe feature vectors you can have are x1 through xm. Okay, and uh, let me show you why that's not too unrealistic. So I'm gonna give you an example of stroke prediction in medical patients. And I'm gonna show you the kind of classic features that we predict stroke from. And um, let's go through how many values each of those features actually take on. Okay, so you could say age. Um, well, age is continuous, but actually it's not, right? In fact, we measure age in years, and years, um, you know, there's only a, really 120 values or so of them, unless people live longer, but you know, you get the idea. Okay, so then gender has two values. Obviously, um, not everyone fits into those two values, but for the purpose of stroke prediction, We'll put everyone who's non, who has a non-binary gender into the most vulnerable category for stroke, which is female. And then past history of stroke will um, give you a yes or a no for that. Blood thinner, whether you take blood thinner, yes or no. Um, whether you have congestive heart failure and whether you have hypertension. Okay, so if you think about it, the size of the space is actually finite. So every person who's being evaluated um, for a prediction of stroke has one of this many possible feature vectors. Okay, so as long as you're willing to work with me in this finite space, um, we can actually figure out what, uh, what uh, properties we want our kernels to have. And what do we want out of our kernel? So I'm going to form the gram matrix of all possible inner products in this space. And now I don't know what properties this matrix is going to have because I haven't defined the, I haven't defined the gram matrix yet, but at least I want to tell you what, what we want to figure out what properties it might have. Okay, so uh, you know each entry in this matrix is an inner product of two different feature vectors. Okay, so um, and this is like all of the inner products in the whole space. There's no more inner products outside of this. So what properties do we want this to have? Um, well, uh, we want the inner product to be symmetric because it has to obey the definition of an inner product. So that's fine. That matrix has to be symmetric. But luckily for us, um, since it's symmetric, it's also diagonalizable. Uh, so uh, as it turns out, um, you know, this fact that real symmetric matrices can be diagonalized is actually um, not too difficult to prove, but it does require a little bit of linear algebra. Okay, so let's diagonalize it. And so we'll diagonalize it to look like that, where V are the um, eigenvectors and lambda is uh, a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. Okay, so something like that. Now, um, and it's, by the way, lambda is zero everywhere except for the diagonal there. Okay, so um, I want you to consider a very specific feature map, and you'll see why I'm defining that in a minute. And so uh, the feature map looks like this. Okay, so what I've done is taken the square root of each of the eigenvalues, and then I multiplied them by um, the ith element of each of the eigenvectors. Okay, so I want you to assume that the lambdas are non-negative, uh, so we can take the square root and get something that's that's positive. Um, if if the lambdas are not if the lambdas are negative, we run into some trouble. I'll show you why in a minute. But in any case, let's assume they're non-negative for now. Okay, so in other words, I've taken the ith row of uh, v v there, and then um, I'm just going to write uh, this. I'm going to write phi both for xi and for xl. So these are just two different points in the feature space. And then I'm going to take the dot products, okay? 
I'll take the, uh, yeah, so there's this other point L there. I is one row, L is another row. Okay. So now I'm going to take the regular dot product in Rm, where again, m is the total number of states in the universe. I take the dot product, looks like that. And then this actually happens to be the ielth entry of that matrix multiplication, which is exactly k, uh, k x i x l. Okay, so cool. So we, we now understand that the inner product uh, that that k can be um, can be viewed as a regular inner product in Rm as long as we use these particular these particular um, feature maps. Okay, so why did I assume that the eigenvalues were non-negative? Why was I doing that? Um, well, let's say that one of them is negative. Well, what happens? So let's take a special point in the space, which is z. Okay, what is z? z is, all right, so z is, um, the coefficients of z are the elements of um, the, uh, the eigenvector vs. And then um, phi there is the phi that's up above. Okay, so now if I take the uh, norm of z, the L2 norm squared, in the regular, you know, Rm uh, space, then when I multiply that all out, I actually find that um, the result is exactly the eigenvalue um, lambda s corresponding to the eigenvector vs. And so that eigenvalue was assumed to be negative. So in that case, we find that the norm is negative, and you really don't want negative norms. That would be just like a headache and a half. Um, so we, <laughs> so we want all the eigen all, all the eigenvalues to be non-negative. Okay, yeah, that's bad. Okay, so if k is going to be an inner product, its grand matrix, capital K, had better be positive semi-definite. So positive semi-definite means non-negative eigenvalues. Okay. So, so far we've learned some important things about k. Um, so when we go to define it, we can force k to have these great properties. So if k is going to be an inner product, we're going to have to have um, a symmetric, the, the gram matrix is going to have to be symmetric. And also it's going to have to be positive semi-definite in order to avoid negative norms. All right, so we'll hear more about what the definition of k is in the next video.